everyone, it's Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay! I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup so you can become the character of your dreams. Today's cosplay is Evelyn from the KDA series of League of Legends. In my past videos you've seen me make Ari and Kaisa. I was going to work on Akali next, but then they released Prestige Evelyn and my god, I had to have it. In a previous video, you also saw me make her claws, and I will be using those for this video. In this video, you'll be learning how to make the rest of the accessories in this basic outfit. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe by clicking that red button down below to become part of my sewing pin cushion called YouTube. I am excited to be showing you this costume. It took me a lot of time. I feel like there's still some things that I want to fix up, but don't worry. This is going to be a two-part series, and let's go ahead and get into it. Originally, I was going to keep painting this for my Evelyn costume, and then I remembered my Princess Jasmine costume had this necklace, which is actually really perfect and requires me not to paint anymore. So instead, I'm going to be using this necklace. For the dress, I made a tube and then I cinched it tighter and made it more fitted. Then I drew lines across the front bust line and then the side back piece. I don't really want to make a full dress here, but you know, this is just a fast way. So now we're going to go to our sewing machine, use white thread at the top and then gold bobbin thread, and we're going to sew against all of these lines. This is just a very fast way to make a tube dress. I don't really have a pattern that I wanted to use, but this is just really fast and easy. So I made a big heart to go on my thighs. So then I'm going to be cutting it out off of foam. I'm using this light blue foam because it's kind of the base crystal color. So then I'm going to warm up my hot glue gun and then I'm going to fold it in half first. And then I'm going to fold it in a few different directions so it looks like it's a crystal. This is going to give it a little bit more dimension. So now that we have a inside star and then I hit it with some nail polish. So for the garter, we want to cut a piece of our gold fabric that goes around our thigh. We want it to be a little bit thicker so it will fold over and then when we're done folding it over, it'll look something along the lines like... Like this. Pop! We don't want it to be too thin and we don't want it to be too thick either. So I just around 4 inches per band. Pow! Sew down the little piece lengthways and then you're going to flip it inside out. Then you're going to sew the edges together. Once you get all that, clip your edges and then you have a nice little seam there. Flip it inside out again and now you have a beautiful garter. Now I'm going to make a larger heart pattern. This is going to be for the gold backing behind the blue heart. I have this blue yellow piece so I'm going to be painting it yellow and then I'm going to layer it with gold paint afterwards. Now that everything is dry for our leg hearts, this part is all gold and then this part isn't gold because it doesn't need to be painted. I'm going to go ahead and secure it over it with hot glue. Once we get it to hot glue, now we need to position it onto our leg bands. So first I'm going to glue the perimeter of the heart itself and that way I can secure it onto Next carefully align it at the bottom points and the middle point and then slowly press it down onto itself. If anything got messed up, quickly pull it back up and then you will be done. So now go ahead and put on your garter. You want to have it stretched out appropriately and then you want to do a nice glue strip first before you glue anywhere else. This way you don't get hot glue on your leg but on the garter itself. I'm saying this because you want glue on the garter, not your skin. So once you have the glue down, go ahead and stick on your heart piece. Be careful, this does get really hot and I kind of felt like I was burning myself. It does get a little bit uncomfortable, but just grin and bear it because once it's down, it's down and it does not move. Go ahead and start moving across the band where the rest of the heart will lie and then you're done. I'm going to take some of my scrap remnant fabric and I'm going to be cutting it off and making a big giant tube. This way it could go around my fingers. These tubes are going to be right before I put on the claws. So what I'm going to do is sew them together and then I'm going to cut them all individually into tubes. I first thought about making them cut while they're first turned inside out, but then I realized to turn them right side out and then cut them. This way I didn't have any problems having to turn inside out all the little pieces. 
Can you tell I like showing off my legs in this video? Anyways, so what we're going to be doing is measuring out our ankle. My ankle is definitely going to be different from yours, but I'm using about eight inches. You wanna be able to take it off and on, so I'm using Velcro. I'm using about a five inch piece of foam lengthwise. Now widthwise, I'm marking out eight inches so it goes around my ankle, and I'm marking it multiple places so I can later draw a straight line. Now I'm going to cut off the excess piece of foam. Now fold it in half and this way you can have two pieces. Go ahead and hold it down as much as possible and then cut that fold. In a previous video, I talked about fabric covered foam and we're going to be doing this in this tutorial for the anklets. I'm using the same fabric as the dress and I cut a little bit of a bigger rectangle around the foam pieces. And then of course, we're just going to glue the edges to the inside and leaving us a very nice piece of foam that's covered with gold fabric. You wanna clip the corners this way, all pieces will lay flat and fold correctly when you want to glue it down. For more detail, I'm going to leave the link to that video in the description box or in the cards. Now cut a piece of Velcro for the width of your anklet. My Velcro is self-adhesive, so I'm going to take one piece off and place it on top. Now the other side, I'm going to remove the other film and then I'm going to flip it so it fits onto the inside. This way I have a nice cuff. Ta-da! Do that for the other one. Before I forget, we need a necklace gem. I created a diamond the same way I did with the hearts and I made a little piece and then I covered it in nail polish. Now I'm going to cut off this tiny bit of foam and a little bit of wire. We want this to go at the back of the necklace, but since this necklace I want to keep versatile for other things, we're going to be making a pendant. I thought my wire was a little bit too thin, so I wrapped it around itself a few times and then I made it into like a little jewelry post hanger and I'm going to be using that on top of the diamond. I'm putting it at the back instead of through it because I don't want to risk anything getting messed up. And then I'm going to use hot glue and then secure it with the extra piece of scrap foam. Once that's done, we can put it onto the necklace piece. For the jacket, I'm using stretch taffeta and the pattern that I used for my clueless jacket. The reason for that is it's very fitted and it's very easy to use because I already have a pattern laying out. So I'm just gonna cut it out and then sew it together. For the sleeves, I need some gold trim. So I'm going to use the single fold bias tape. It's very shiny gold and it sort of matches the gold that I have on hand versus cutting out the fabric. With the power of great patience, slowly sew this in the middle of the sleeve. You want to go slow because if you mess up, you got to go back and seam rip it and it's not fun. I ended up doing a basting stitch on the sleeves together and I did it together because I want to get the right cut and that way they have the right shape and I might cut off more here. So who's excited to see how well this jacket is coming along? I already sewed the inside seams and the jacket together. And then of course I added the sleeves after I finished adding the binding and I went ahead and hemmed the bottom edge here. So now let's go ahead and try it on the jacket before we add the final touches. The final touches will include hemming the bottom, making sure that it fits correctly and where we want it to be, and then doing the collar. The collar is very important, so let's see. I think it flares out exactly how I want it to. This is a self-drafted pattern. Now I just need to add a collar and then probably cut a few, oh, well, I'll probably line it up to where this is right here. And then we will be done with the jacket. I feel so disco-y. I cut off the bottom edge and then I hemmed it with a single fold. Now I'm going to line up all of the pieces and I'm going to make the collar go to that seam line. Now I'm going to measure out that seam line to the middle and then do the other side just for safety's sake. With that measurement, I'm going to use a piece of paper on the fold and this way I'll have a exact replica on both sides and then draw out how high I want my pattern to be. It's kind of like rectangly. The in-game artwork is a little bit different from the promotional artwork, so I'm just kind of winging what this shape should look like. 
Once I have the pattern, I'm going to cut it out. Now I'm going to open that shape and trace it onto interfacing. The reason why I'm tracing it on interfacing is because I just want the full shape rather than having to do the whole folding method, and this is the exact size that I want anyways, so everything is fine. Once I've finished tracing it, I'm going to cut it out. Fuse the interfacing to the same fabric as your jacket, and make sure you have enough so that it can fold over on top of it. We're doing the same method that I did for my Maria Renard cosplay. So what I'm going to do is cut off the excess fabric that I don't need on the side, and then I'm going to fold it over, making sure that I have enough fabric to go on top of the interfacing. This is going to seal it in, and that way it will not become exposed. Collars are seen on both sides, so you want to be careful with that. I'm going to make a very nice crisp fold first, and then I'm going to fill in the edges and cut them inward. I'm going to do a basting stitch on the sides and then at the bottom. The reason why we don't want to do a stitch at the top is because it's already folded over fabric. Here you can see that the sides actually have been folded inwards and we don't want that to come out. With the collar being done, now you want to add it to the neckline. I'm going to pin it down and then sew it. With the collar finally attached, I'm going to cut off all the excess of the collar and then I'm going to be serging the edge. Once I serge the edge and complete that, I'm going to do one single fold over and then hem the entire jacket opening. With that, this will be the completed cosplay. wondering I actually did have the last of this and I am so happy with it I actually don't know if I want to like fix it up a little bit more and add like a nice hem at the bottom or top of the dress I mean it's stretched like a it does not tear unless you stretch it a lot and I don't really want there to be like a hemline here this isn't a completely finished cosplay, but this is for last minute kind of ideas. If I really wanted to, I could cut up a dress correctly and get the panels right, but this is just a fast, quick way to do it if you're new to cosplaying. I did start making this cosplay also on my Twitch channel. I'll be trying to stream more on Twitch, so if you're interested in that, make sure to check out the link in my description box. And in my next video, I'm going to be showing you how I make Evelyn's Tales. They weren't completed for this video because I ran into a lot of problems, but they're looking really great. So in the near future, you're going to see the Evelyn Tale video, and I know I'm going to be putting out a little bit of vlogs, so there's that. Like I said, make sure to check out the videos around me. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and become part of my pin cushion called YouTube. Stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!